Developed and published by Altered Orbit Studios, Sulaco is an epic sci-fi first-person shooter set aboard a space station under attack. Sulaco began its life as a Doom Total Conversion mod before evolving into a standalone title, being developed with the hottest retro engine around, GZ Doom, a modern variant of the original Doom engine. And that right there is a big reason why Sulaco has been garnering so much hype within the indie shooter scene, as it pushes the now 30-year-old tech to some jaw-dropping heights. Sulaco was recently dropped into early access, and since then I've done nothing but devour its brutal combat and explore its intriguing, highly detailed environments. And today I'm happy to lend my thoughts on it to help you decide if it's worth sliding into. But before we get started, I want to give a big thank you to Altered Orbit for providing the review code. Alrighty, let's get pretty and paint the walls pink. Starting off, let's touch on the early access details. Priced at $24.99 American, Sulaco is a refreshing title when it comes to early access as it packs enough value and content to be considered a viable 1.0 release. This initial build features the first of three planned chapters, what the developer considers the base campaign, an adventure made up of 31 maps featuring 11 weapons and 14 enemies. It's estimated to take players 9 to 12 hours to complete, and for me it took 16 as I spent a good chunk of time secret hunting and exploring. It's also worth mentioning this first build is Steam Deck compatible, has full controller support, integrated mod support, and Steam achievements. There's a host of difficulties with an evil bonus one, as well as campaign modifiers, like a hardcore mode that limits your saves and turns off health regeneration. Yeah, it's a packed build to say the least. Altered Orbit's plan is to utilize Sulaco's early access period to take in player feedback and implement any improvements or fixes based on it, while finishing the game's second and third chapters. When Sulaco will leave early access is not totally clear. According to the dev, the goal is to leave EA once chapter 3 is done. However, depending on where they feel the game is at, they could exit when chapter 2 is complete, with chapter 3 put out as a post-launch expansion. They have claimed a proper roadmap should be revealed shortly after the early access launch, so hopefully that should clear things up. Either way though, Sulaco is estimated to remain in early access anywhere between 18 to 24 months, what is sure to be a grueling wait. But fortunately, we've been given plenty to sink our teeth into for now. The Allen Coalition for Expansion has worked tirelessly to create Sulaco. A state of the art and self-sustaining ecosystem. takes place on, well, the Sulaco. Sulaco space station to be specific, harboring the last of humanity, escaping a catastrophe that has claimed Earth. You play as Dawn, a high-ranking member of ACES, a military force tasked with keeping the Sulaco safe. The game begins with Dawn waking up to explosions and gunfire within a hospital room, a get well soon balloon tipping us off that she has been recovering from some incident that landed her there. Sulaco station is under attack by a mysterious force of pink-blooded soldiers, ruthlessly slaughtering everyone in their path leaving Dawn no choice but to get things under control. Bruises and bandages be damned. Sulaco is very much in that System Shock Half-Life school of storytelling, where the narrative is conveyed experientially, through visuals and good old-fashioned data logs and plenty of informational pamphlets. It's a style of storytelling that will appeal to shooter fans that prefer the narrative be optional. However, those that take the time to dive into it will not only become familiar with the everyday lives of Sulaco residents, but might be able to piece together what exactly is going on. And even if narrative is ignored, it's hard not to glean specifics of living in Sulaco and what keeps the station afloat, so to speak. As a sci-fi fan, I found Sulaco's speculative take on the far-flung future to be fascinating. Unfortunately, this chapter does end on a cliffhanger, leaving me with more questions than answers, but I feel this is the beginning of a rich sci-fi universe that has me eager to see what's next. As I said before, Sulaco was built in GZ Doom and pushes the retro tech to impressive limits. Sulaco looks so good it makes the Doom engine look like the Quake engine, and yes, I am being hyperbolic there, but truly the visuals go beyond what many would assume from the 30-year-old tech. Environments are pristinely detailed in a way that makes Sulaco feel realistic despite the pixels and low poly models. A big thing that helps this and what I love is that the game is full of models made with voxels. Wonderful, wonderful voxels. 
I'm not sure why I love voxels so much. Maybe it's the fact that they make sprite work feel more tangible with their little retro cubes, or maybe they poke that part of my brain that loves scale models and miniatures. But either way, this game is overflowing with them and they look fantastic. Everything from french fries to heart monitors, office chairs to piles of snow, coffee cups to yoga mats. Hell, even the bullets are made of voxels, and they give the world so much character. That's not to mention the interactivity with them. We've seen plenty of shooters let you interact with pool tables and pool balls, but how many actually throw in a simulation aspect? Whew, that was close. The icing on the cake is a bevy of beautiful effects like reflections, soft shadows, particle effects, and lighting. I wouldn't say Sulaco has dynamic lighting, but it does a decent job of faking it with things like your flashlight. But the technical aspects are one thing. What makes Sulaco's visuals so captivating is the art direction and attention to detail. Despite being made with 90s tech, Sulaco looks nothing like a 90s game, aiming for a sleek, modern sci-fi look that is right in line with today's sci-fi media, with some anime influence. You can really tell that Altered Orbit was striving to make this station feel like an actual place that humans inhabit. And I'm not just talking about having furniture, cups, plants, food, and light fixtures, and working sinks and toilets everywhere, although all that is certainly great. Ugh. But what I'm referring to more is the little touches, like having children's drawings hung up by the employees of a hospital, or the remnants of a party celebrating the birth of a child or details hinting at the cultural intricacies of living on Sulaco Station, like a sign at a movie theater telling viewers to turn off the lights on their wristbands to not disturb others. It's the sort of attention to detail that transcends the tech. Like, if this was made in a modern engine, let's say Unreal 5, with the same attention to detail, it would give most AAA games a run for their money. Honestly, this is the type of work I would expect from an Arcane Leon or Kojima Productions. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about fidelity. I'm talking about the amount, polish, and depth of the detail put into this game, and how well it immerses you in the experience. <laughs> Sulaco checks all of my boxes when it comes to graphics, and any criticism I can scratch up are the nittiest of picks. For example, while each area of Sulaco does feel distinct, it can feel a bit samey, seeing as you are going through a lot of dim, blue-hued hallways and industrial maintenance areas. Although, to be fair, the last few areas do shake things up a bit. And since this is a Doom Engine game, you do hit some limitations of the engine, like the occasional texture that's a hair too pixelated, or some of the advertisement artwork being noticeably low resolution. Oh, sup, G? Performance can also have some potential bumpiness. For the most part, my experience was smooth sailing. However, there were frame dips during heavy firefights with lots of particle effects. Not abnormal, but still not the best. To be fully transparent too, I was traveling while reviewing this game and played a majority of it on a mid-level laptop that did require some settings tweaks to keep those frames steady. On my high-end machine back home, I was able to run on ultra settings with minimal minor frame dips. So overall, I do think the game is well optimized, but it could vary from player to player. Touching on audio last, the sound design also gets similar high marks. Every area of this game has a rich soundscape that makes the game more believable. Walking through most hallways, you'll hear the hum of ventilation systems, alarm bells going off, sparks from damage, and the distant gunfire and explosions of the station's invaders. Like, let's just take a second to listen to just how much can be heard. Sound effects for weapons, enemies, and gore are also superb. The weapons sound thunderous and lethal. Enemies speak and react realistically, and the squish of flying guts and pink blood will make the psychopath and all of us gleeful. Not to mention the sounds of bullets ripping through glass, paper, and plastic during frantic shootouts is, ugh, delicious audio chocolate. Oh, and the music is dope too. A suite of synthy electronic beats that fits this sci-fi universe like a glove and drive the heart-pounding action perfectly. Also, the Resident Evil fan in me really appreciates the safe room theme.
Overall, the presentation here is a magnificent example of what can be done with GZ Doom and a testament to the efforts of the Doom modding community. Switching gears to gameplay, Sulaco is very much an adventure shooter, an experience that tasks players with exploring a continuous, expansive, non-linear world full of puzzles, keycards, and secrets, all the while surviving its frantic, deep, and unforgiving combat. While Sulaco was built with the tech that gave us Doom, its combat does not attempt to emulate it, presenting a more contemporary FPS experience. Inspired heavily by 2005's Fear, developed by Monolith, something that may surprise some going into it, thinking it's just another good old boomer shooter. Oh sure, Sulaco has its run and gun qualities, and the action is nothing less than bombastic and bloody, with intense shootouts leaving environments in tatters and enemies in pink puddles. But overall, the combat leans a little more tactical, where precise shots and adequate cover are often more effective than quick reflexes. The shooting feels excellent and is loads of fun. Each weapon feels powerful and poppy, with the frantic enemy damage effects really making you feel like you've done some damage. All that being said, your starting weapons are initially not all that amazing, the assault rifle being the most well-rounded, with the magnum and shotgun bringing some power, but slow to fire and reload, with a missed shot likely meaning your end. As you progress though, you are able to upgrade your weapons in various safe houses scattered throughout the station, as well as collect mods for them, giving them deadly perks, as well as multiple alternate fires, allowing you to equip yourself for whatever challenge the game throws at you. And the late game weapons I unlocked brought nothing but smiles. Oh yes, this game will make you feel the power. However, even when the full arsenal is unlocked and the weapons modded to their best versions, it doesn't mean you can rampage like a tank. Nope, these baddies will always have a way to counter and easily defeat you right up until the final hours. This is not a game where you can circle strafe and hope for the best. No, this is a game where you have to think smart, think fast, and be efficient, or else. Enemies are intelligent and ruthless, with the itchiest of trigger fingers. While at times you'll have the opportunity to sneak up on them or around them, once you are spotted, these bad guys are not only effective at hunting you down and flanking you, but also protecting themselves, quick to dive for cover and not shy about lobbing grenades. Most combat encounters I felt like I was barely surviving. It was always stunning just how quickly baddies could melt my health and armor away, to the point where I debated if they were a little too punishing in their behavior. And the game revels in making them tougher as you progress, unlocking invasion tiers that buffs them with shields, more powerful ammo, or elite variants that can buff surrounding enemies further. For some, this will keep the game invigorating and heart pumping. For others, it may lead to a consistently frustrating journey. For me, it was the former. The evolving challenge kept the game far from boring. But there were plenty of times I found myself stuck on a skirmish, frustrated with repeated deaths, and looking for alternate means of survival. But therein lies another of the game's positives, as this often revealed creative means of cover I could utilize, access to a better vantage point, or different means of defense. Each area is full of options to help you, and the master stroke here is that they feel organic to that environment. The combat might not be everyone's cup of tea, but for me it was challenging, rewarding, consistently surprising, and incredibly enjoyable. Now, some may be surprised to find that Sulaco is not wall-to-wall -wall combat. No, the game is actually paced more akin to an immersive sim. In between skirmishes are plenty of lengthy stretches where there's no combat and the player is left to explore and solve puzzles. And I have to say I looked forward to these moments just as much as the combat, because Sulaco Station is so much fun to explore and learn about. Once again, Altered Orbit have done an incredible job of making this place feel like a place. However, it's in these quieter moments where the game can trip up. 
Because the objectives can be on the vague side, there were quite a few times I found myself just plain lost and confused, helped in no small part by the more open, non-linear map layouts. Majority of the time I was able to figure things out before getting frustrated, and utilizing the feature-rich map system does much to help you. But a handful of Salako's objectives I would say were too confusing, with one having me running in circles for an hour before I stumbled on the solution that was far from obvious. It's not like I need my hand held, but I think more signposting and clarity would be a good thing all around. Speaking of navigation, eventually players can unlock a fast transit system that lets them return to previous areas, listing out any items, secrets, or locked doors they have yet to uncover. A handy feature as finding all secrets unlocks a special level. However, this does bring up one of my criticisms. While backtracking and secret hunting was worth my time, leading me to valuable upgrades, the process of doing it felt like a chore. The main culprit is that the game makes you go through an entire one minute tram ride without the option to skip, sandwiched between a shorter but also unskippable elevator ride. When you really get yourself into a secret hunt grind, the wasted time here can really add up and start to feel annoying. And on top of that, backtracking through the old, empty levels can feel mundane, especially when you unlock a room that's just full of ammo and currency. This is one aspect of the game I hope the devs streamline in the future and perhaps find a way to make a little more exciting. Salako is a triumph. For me, it's easily one of the best games I've played this year, one of the best GZ Doom games I've played, and if I'm so bold, I think it's one of the best games I've reviewed for this channel. What it does with GZ Doom is awe-inspiring, but frankly, it's far from the coolest aspect of this game. What really stands out here is the attention to detail in its immersive world, the brutal combat, and the heaps of intelligent design that can make a AAA studio sweat. Like many in the indie shooter realm, it wears its influences proudly on its sleeve, but it succeeds at defining its own identity, sidestepping expectations in surprising but welcome ways. It has a few trip-ups, some stemming from its ambitious design and some from the limitations of the engine. And it is a style of shooter that's not going to be everyone's can of pop. But my god, Altered Orbit has really created something special here. If it isn't obvious, Salako gets my highest recommendation. Of course, it's still in early access, and I always encourage people to go with their gut when it comes to that. There's nothing wrong with waiting for the 1.0 version. But here's the thing. Even if the worst case scenario happened and the rest of Salako got cancelled and this is all we got, it would still be worth the money and still worth your time. If you love GZ Doom titles, shooters that play like fear, and games that make you feel like you're in a living, breathing world, then play Salako immediately. Man, am I excited to see what comes next for this one. But that's it for me. What are your thoughts on Salako? Be sure to let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, subscribe, share, and smack that bell. If you want to come say hi, my Discord is linked below along with my affiliate links. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.